Hi guys, it's Ali. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be testing some cheap neon watercolour paints and making a bunch of different birthday cards. Thought it would be fun to test out these paints and also put them through their paces at the same time. I really hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more like this. The paints we're going to be using in today's video are the Karembi watercolour paint set, the neon collection. This is from the brand Mozart on Amazon right now is priced at £7.99 in the UK, but there is actually the opportunity to apply a £2 voucher. You could buy these paints for £5.99, which I think is roughly what I paid for them. They come in a cardboard box with a cardboard sleeve over the top. There is also this little plastic lid, which is quite handy to use as a palette with these paints. The watercolour pans do come out of the box as well, so if you wanted to put them in your own case, you can. There are six different colours in the palette. Neon red, neon pink, neon orange, neon yellow, neon green, neon blue and they are quite large pans of paint. I'm not sure exactly how large the pan sizes are but they are about the same as the Gansai Tambi paints that I have. Much larger than a regular watercolour half or full pan that you might be used to. So the only way in my opinion for us to know whether these paints are actually any good is to try them out. So before I started using them I really wanted to make some swatches of them. I think this is the best way for you to see how the colours perform especially if you use the paper that you're planning on painting on. I am not really a painter. I do like working with paint but I am not somebody who is confident in painting portraits or landscapes or anything like that. I like to use paints in my crafting quite a lot but usually mostly for abstract things and I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways later on in this video that you can use paints yourself without really having any what you might call artistic ability. I just love to play with colour and I think paints are a fantastic way to do that. So I wanted to test whether these paints were super vibrant, how bright they were, if they were really neon and also how well they played with water, if you could water them down, what kind of granulation you get which if you're not familiar with that term is where the pigment in the paint kind of spreads out out in the water and whether it is smooth or whether it has a little bit more flow to it. I quite like granulation in the paints that I use but there are some areas where you might not want to use granulation so if you were making a really hyper realistic watercolour portrait you might not want that, you might want your paint to be super smooth. I did find that it was quite easy to control these paints and you could get really nice granulating effect if you use the paint with a wet on wet technique. I was really impressed with how bright these paints were. When they say neon, they're, they're not messing around. The only one that was a little bit of a disappointment was the blue, but I kind of expected this going in because neon blue is a really difficult colour to formulate and they also water down really well to make nice pastel colours. So I think this is a surprisingly versatile set to have. You might not use neon paint a whole lot, I think it's always nice to have something different to play around with. So now we've had a good play around with these paints, let's get into some of the cards that I'm going to make. I'm going to keep the supplies pretty minimal in this video. I've obviously got my adhesive, I like to use both glue and tape. I've got some water and some paintbrushes, I've got some little embellishments. I'm going to be using these little star sequins and also some neon gems in this video. Both of these are from AliExpress and I've got different options for sentiment. So I'm going to use a die but I'm also going to use some stamps so whatever you have at home you can just go with that. I need some watercolour paper of course, I'm just using this Winsor & Newton one which is quite affordable in the A5 size and then I've also got some neon card that I got from the works in one of my previous hauls. This is really cheap, I think it's meant for kids but I think it's really fun to try and use on cards so I thought I'd whack that out and give it a go since I hadn't used it yet and I've just got some basic heavyweight white card that I'm going to use for my card bases so that's all we're going to use in this video. So. To start our first background, we're going to do kind of a watercolour camo-y kind of effect. So I'm just going to pick three colours. For this one, I'm going to use yellow, orange and red because they're quite close to each other on the colour spectrum. So I know they'll play nicely together and I'm just using these to spread randomly on the watercolour paper. And then I'm going to mix in the gaps just with a bit of water to just kind of get a little bit of granulation and mixing in between the colours going on. I sprayed it with a little bit of water from a spray bottle just to get the colours moving and then just went back in with some fairly clean water on my paintbrush just to mix in the gaps. And it started off looking camo, but it ended up looking like a nice watercolour background. And I was really impressed with the way that these paints mix with the water and they don't lose a lot of their vibrancy. You obviously will lose a little bit as you mix the water in and they'll dry back a little bit lighter than they look when they're wet. But I think overall, 
they just perform really really well and obviously you could layer them up and do more than one layer if you wanted to bring some of that vibrancy back or you could just use less water as you're using them really it's up to you and they're really really versatile and you can play around with different techniques with these so i think they are more than worth the price the second background i'm using the same technique but this time i'm using pink green and blue i was a bit worried this will go a little bit muddy and sort of at the edges it did a little bit but i did manage to rescue it and on the final cards you can't really tell the next background i'm going to do is a little bit similar to the swatch image that I did I was kind of inspired by that so I'm starting off with really saturated blobs of color at the top of my watercolor card I'm just going to use every color and kind of make like a little neon rainbow I thought this would be a really nice sort of drippy background to try and you know you don't need any artistic talent to be able to do this you don't even need a particularly good brush control skill to do this either so I just put my colored blobs at the top of the cardstock and then I'm going to use some clean water just to drag the color down and fade it towards the bottom of the page so there is I just apply the water down first and then I kind of spread the paint into it to kind of have a gradient effect going down the panel so I really like this one I think it's really effective even though it it takes hardly any time to create I think it just looks really really pretty on the final cards so this one was super super fun to do and really really easy if you find the colors are getting a little bit more muted you can always add a little bit more paint back into the top the next couple of panels I'm going to do some splattering so I've got my splat box which is just a pizza box and I get a lot of deliveries of online orders come in these so I've got a lot of them knocking around in my studio so I'm just using the paint with not too much water on this because you want to be able to kind of fling it and have a bright pigmented splatter on your card so I just started with the orange and then moving on to the yellow make sure that you let your panels dry in between the layers because otherwise your colors will mix together and you won't get that like really vibrant separation between the different colors obviously if that's the look you're going for that's fine but for these particular ones i let it dry between each color so i could make sure i didn't get some kind of horrible muddy brown effect at the end so i'm just using all of the different colors in the palette i thought it would be fun to have a really splattery bright background and i think it came out really really nice this one i think that's one of my favorites for this panel i'm going to water the colors down quite a lot and go for more of a neon pastel look if that I mean if that's even a thing I used a lot of water with these and I kind of blended them together and they look really neon I think on the panel here as they dry back they definitely go a lot softer and I think the final result is is really really pretty and they really blended nicely together and didn't really take too much work from me so now all of the backgrounds we have finished now we just gotta wait for them to dry so while we're doing that let's go on to making some sentiments i'm gonna do a little bit of die cutting i've cut this happy birthday die out of white card stock a bunch of times just because the neon cardstock is quite thin so i wanted to give an extra layer so i'm gonna glue two layers of the white die cuts together and then I'm going to glue my neon ones on top so I've made four different ones of these so I can make four different cards I like to use liquid glue for this because they're easier to stick together and that's that's those they're nice and nice and chunky now and they'll be easy to stick on a card I'm going to trim these neon watercolory camo backgrounds down now and I'm going to end up making three cards out of each sheet yeah quite quite a large amount of cards made made in this video I do like to make quite large batches of cards but something I don't like to do is make the same card over and over again because I do get very bored so <laughs> I like to mix it up and do something a little bit different even if I'm batch making cards which I think people might not realize you can you can do that but you definitely can I just tend to batch similar things together so right now for example I'm gluing on all of the sentiments and then just leaving those to dry and now we're going to do some stamped sentiments with some of the other panels that we've got so this one i'm just going to use some black versafine ink to stamp over the top with this stamp set from crafters companion which is a nice versatile one because it's got lots of different fonts in versafine black ink is one of my favorite inks to use and i use it so often because it's so good for sentiments you get a really really nice crisp image even on a textured cardstock like this. My trick for stamping onto watercolor cardstock, because it's not completely flat, sometimes you don't get the best impression. So there's my first impression. Not ideal, it's not the worst, but you know, it can be 
it could do with a couple more layers so that's why i love my stamping positioning tool for this because you can stamp as many times as you want to in the same spot so i've got a lovely black crisp image there with three layers of stamping and that's what i'm gonna carry on doing for some of the other cards so this is the pastel neon background that we did it's dried back to a really really nice soft pastel ombre and i'm gonna stamp a happy birthday on this one as well i've got a nice big handwritten font here from the same set and i think this is this is really pretty it's really nice and large so it really fills up the card panel really well so you don't need a lot of other stuff going on we're just going to add a little bit of embellishment at the end and then we're just going to use the happy and overlap it slightly at the top of the panel which i think is really nice and these paints were really nice to stamp on top of the cards with some of the thicker paint on didn't take the ink so well uh, but because I used a pigment ink, which is the first fine, you can still stamp on top and not have to worry. You just have to be careful not to smudge it. And I did have a few problems in this video with smudging a little bit of ink, even though I'd left them to dry for quite a long time. But we managed to save it. This little piece, I wasn't quite sure it was big enough to make a card panel. So what I did was cut a slice off of it and then filled it in with a little bit of neon green card. I've just taped these together at the back so I can stamp on top of them and they're all kind of the same height. If I had just mounted them onto the green card that would have been fine but I wouldn't have been able to do this stamping over the top because they would have been at different heights it would have been really difficult to get a good impression but because they're all at the same height here I can easily stamp across the three panels and not have a problem these are our splattery backgrounds now they're nice and dry they're looking really really good and i decided not to embellish these really any further because the background was already quite busy so i could just get away with stamping a sentiment on top and then mounting them on the card which is really nice i'm just trimming them down to remove any scruffy bits on the edge and then this drippy panel i'm gonna stamp happy birthday on here as well because the paint is thinner at the bottom of the card it was much easier to stamp happy birthday there so i decided to stick my sentiment down there at the bottom and i'm just using my versafine again in my stamping positioning tool and just making sure that i have a really really nice impression on that one and then that that one is ready to go on the card and be embellished these splattery cards i'm just going to use the happy birthday sentiment stamps again and the black versus fine ink these ones i did leave to dry overnight just to make sure that the pigment ink had settled properly into the cardstock and i didn't have any issues with these smudging so i was quite pleased about that even though the paint was quite thick underneath i wasn't sure it would stick but it didn't seem to have any problems if you are worried you can always heat emboss so you could use the VersaFine ink and then just heat emboss with a clear embossing powder and then you could make sure that all of the pigment ink was covered and it wouldn't smudge. But I'll be honest with you, I was too lazy to do that. <laughs> so I didn't want to get all my heat embossing stuff out. So I just stuck with the pigment ink and to be honest, I didn't really have any problems. So that's those two done. That's looking really nice. I love the contrast between the black sentiment and all the neon splatters. I'm now going to mount up all of the other panels onto the cards. Because these are all different sizes, I actually went and created all my own card bases and you'll see on the back of the panels that I've written the sizes so I just went and measured them all and then worked out how big the card base needed to be with like a little border around the edge usually an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch and then I just mounted them all up some of them are a little bit smaller than others so I decided to use a neon cardstock mat underneath just to make them a little bit bigger and a little bit more substantial I'm not really fussed about what size my finished cards are I know some people really like to make you know five by seven or a six but I genuinely don't care <laughs> Uh, that might be a little bit controversial but I don't really like to measure things when I'm working so it doesn't matter what size they end up as all I do is just maybe make my own envelope or just use an envelope that's slightly bigger it's not a problem I had some problems with this ink smudging so I used my sand eraser to remove the excess ink on there it did remove some of the paint underneath because what it does is sand away the surface but because these are watercolor i didn't think it was really a problem you couldn't you couldn't tell because the whole panel wasn't covered in paint anyway the last thing i'm going to do on my cards is add a little bit of embellishment where needed so this one i'm just adding some of these neon gems that i got from aliexpress just using my little wax jewel picker to apply them and i think that just really finished off that card really nicely it's nice and minimal but it has enough detail to make it look handmade and pretty i'm just going to use these gems on a couple of the other cards as well i think it's nice to mix it up a little bit so on some of the cards i use the gems where they sort of blend into the background which i think is a little bit nice and then on other ones i decided to apply them in the areas where they would contrast with the background 
So I tended to stick to the same colours that were on the card, but I just kind of mixed up whether you could see them or not. I also used some of these little star sequins, which I think are actually meant for nail art, and that's a good tip I have for you if you're looking for some new embellishments for your cards. Look at nail art stuff because it's generally roughly the same sort of size but it can often be much cheaper i think because it seems to be a wider like a wider topic like more people might be interested in that or maybe people who don't do nail art don't want to spend as much on their sequins you can often find a similar stuff that you might find sold for cards but it can be a lot cheaper and uh, you know we all like a bargain don't we the last thing i need to do is just finish mounting up these cards and these ones i just decided to mount on their white card bases you can use foam tape if you like but i thought it was it was fine i think the splatters go all the way to the edge so you still get a nice little bit of contrast between them and your card base and i'm just going to add some gems onto this card i'm going to use the same color that is on the paint on this card just to you know add a little bit of extra detail and then when you tilt the card in the light there's just this really pretty sparkle which i think is really nice don't need a ton of embellishment on your cards to make them stand out i think this is a really really pretty example and i really like it and then i think there's just a couple of other cards that i wanted to add a few more gems to so we're just going to pop some green and pink ones on this happy birthday card which is a i think a perfect way of using up a little bit of cardstock that was left over and this one I've managed to cover up all of the mistakes so <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video and it taught you something new please let me know in the comments which was your favorite card I would love to hear which one you like the best and also I'm going to put all the links to the products that I use in this video including the watercolor paints in the description box so if you want to go and check any of them out they will be down there thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you back here on my channel again soon bye